Hi, so now I just want to introduce um, one type of calculation that will be fairly short. Um, there's nothing new in terms of equations, but now you have to uh, realize that once we've solved the circuit, so let me go back to that example that we did, uh, we did before. Um, we solve, so we found the currents everywhere in this circuit, including the current directions of the current, those are shown here, and the values of the currents here, shown here, uh, I rewrote the values with four sig figs when we're doing the calculations because I want to use that to do a calculation uh, later on. Okay, so we, we have the entire circuit. Once we have solved this, you can answer any questions about the circuit. Uh, by the way, notice that I wrote the priorities here of all the elements, the resistors here, the batteries, and so on, using the currents we solved. Uh, and I want to emphasize that the currents that I'm showing here are the correct ones, right? So those are the ones we would draw at the very end, uh, pointing in the correct, uh, that gives us the correct directions with all the values here positive. Okay, so we can answer a question like this. Let's say I pick two points of the circuit, any two points, let's say A and B here, and I use a DMM as a voltmeter to measure the voltage between points uh, A and B. So if I connect the DMM at those two points, I can ask the question, what voltage will we read on the DMM, uh, the digital multimeter? So how do you uh, calculate that? What we want is the difference of potential between points A and B. Now, a difference of potential, you always have, just saying a difference of potential between two points is a bit ambiguous because I, I can calculate the potential at point B minus the potential at A, or the potential at A minus the potential at B. So I have two, uh, two different possible answers for the difference of potential. Um, and the only difference between the two is just the, the overall sign. But let's say we calculate V at point B minus V at point A, okay? Let's say we calculate this quantity here. So to calculate this, what we need to do is, um, is well, because I, I, I want to at B minus at point A, what we have, we have to do is that we have to start at A and to move along the circuit up to point B. So point B will be my final point and point A will be my initial point. So if I add all the delta Vs as I go from A to B, what I'm going to get is V at the final point, which is V at B, minus V at the initial point, which is V at A. So to calculate this, I have to go from A to B. Okay, because this is my final point, this is my potential at my initial point. So I have to go from A to B. Okay, so we want to go from A to B. Now there are many, many ways to get from A to B. Uh, and the key point here, the key principle is that the voltage you'll get as you go from A to B does not depend on your choice of path that you follow in the circuit. For example, uh, the simplest one is just, the shortest one is to go this way, go down here, go to left, and go back up here to B, following this green line in that direction. That's the shortest path. But I can also, I could actually go the other way here. I could, I could move up here, go this way, and come back this way. Or, uh, if I'm really crazy, I can go up here in A, choose to turn right, go all the way here on the right branch down here, to the left here, and then go back here, and then go to point B. The key point is that when you calculate the difference of potential between two points, it does not matter which way you go. Of course, uh, in some problems, there would be some, some choices that would make the calculation easier, and, and some other choices would make the calculation longer. But uh, the final answer does not depend on that. So let's first do it with the shortest, the most obvious uh, path here, this way. So I go down like this here. There's no delta V. As I go here, there's no delta V because I'm, I'm in a wire, an ideal wire. Left here, still no difference of potential. Now I'm going across the, the battery here, the 9 volts. And I'm going from the higher potential to the lower potential. So that means that as I go this way uh, to reach point B, the living the electric potential decreases, right? I go from high potential to low potential. So the delta V as I go this way uh, to point B is minus nine volts. And I'm at point B and that's it. V at B minus V at A is minus nine volts. Okay, um, and we're done. So actually to answer this question, the 
difference of potential between points A and B, notice that I didn't even need the currents. So I could have answered this question at the very beginning, even before we solved the, for the currents. Okay, that's uh, something important to keep in mind because sometimes we can be asked to find the difference of potential between two points in a circuit, and then you say, okay, I don't know the currents, I'll have to first calculate all the currents. But sometimes actually you can answer the question uh, if you're lucky because um, you don't need to know the currents. What's special here, we don't need to know the currents because there is a path here that avoids uh, any resistors. So we just go to a battery and, and battery. And that, that, in that, that case, I don't need the currents anywhere. Okay, what's the uh, meaning of the sign here? Well, from the equation here, this is V at B minus V at A. So clearly, if the VB minus VA is negative, that tells us that VA is larger than VB. So the, potential, the electric potential at point A is higher than the electric potential at point B by 9 volts. Again, notice that I cannot tell what's the electric potential at point A or at point B separately. This is, actually, this is totally arbitrary. I could put the ground at B or at A or at anywhere else. All I'm saying here is that I'm not, I'm not giving the potential at point uh, A or B. I'm saying simply that point A is 9 volts above in potential um, than point B. So I'm just telling the difference between the two. Often in the book, when they ask a difference of potential between two points, or a voltage between two points, they don't specify if they want at point B minus at point A, or at point A minus at point B. So what they really want is the absolute value when they ask that, between two points in a circuit. So if we're asked what's the voltage bet between points A and B, and without any more information, then we will just calculate the absolute value, which is 9 volts. So that tells you that that tells us that between points A and B there's a difference of nine volts, but just that by itself, just this result here doesn't tell us which point is a higher potential. This result here, this tells us which point is at higher potential. It tells us that point A is at a higher potential than point B. Okay, so another way of giving the information instead of giving we can give the information this way, then it's complete, or we can give the voltage and absolute value and then add the statement uh, delta V in absolute value is 9 volts with point A at a higher potential than point B, okay? So, so, so these two information here written this way is just longer, but this conveys the same information as VB minus VA is equal to minus 9 volts, right? They're totally equivalent, but this is just longer to write. Okay. My, the point, uh, the key point is that if you go from A to B, it doesn't matter which, which which path you follow in the circuit. So just to show you that, to convince you of that, let's do, let's calculate again VB minus VA, but let's follow a different, a different uh, path. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, again, I go from uh, A to B, but now this time, I'm going to choose to go uh, this way. I'll go to the 15 volts here, to this resistor here, go left here, and go down here. So I, I go in that direction here along the blue line. I could have chosen to actually go right here and then go around here and do anything you want. As long as you start at A and you end, end up at B, you get the same result. Now, this path is, is more complicated because now I will need the currents. I will need the value of IA and IB because I'm going to this resistor here. So to find the delta V in that resistor here, R1, I need IA. To find the delta V across R2, I need IB. So this is clearly a much uh, more complicated calculation than the other path we followed where we just went through the 9 volts and we didn't need any currents. But we should get the same answer if we have the correct values of the currents. Okay, so let's, let's go this way. First, I go up here. I'm going through the uh, ba battery E3 but the potential decreases. I go from high potential to low potential. So I drop by minus 15 volts, and then I go to R2. I'm going from the negative ter uh, ter terminal of the, of the resistor to the positive here. That, that is telling us that as I'm going up, the electric potential increases. By how much? By, I use Ohm's law. It increases by R2 times the current that flows in R2, which is IB. So I have to add R2 multiplied by IB. And then I keep going like this here. Then again, um, uh, I look at the, 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 the priorities of the, the resistor. 
Um, and then I go from again from high lower potential to higher potential. So again, there's an increase of potential. Equal to what? Equal to R1 multiplied by the current that flows through R1, which is IA. So I, I add R1 IA and now I'm at point B. So that's it. This should give us exactly the same result we had before by the other path, which was minus nine volts. Okay. Then you plug in the values. We know R2, we know IB, we know R1, IA. We plug in the values, you get this. R2 times IB gives 3.196 volts. R1 times 1 IA gives 2.804 volts. And if I add everything here, well, you see clearly here, this number plus this number here gives exactly plus 6. So we add up everything and we get minus 9 volts, which is exactly the same result we had before. Okay. Uh, so that just shows you, it's a way to actually dub, double check that our currents are correct because if the currents were wrong, we one of those values here would be would be uh, incorrect and it would not have worked. So the upshot of all that is that now once that you know the correct direction of the currents with their values, you can find the voltage between any two points in a circuit by uh, following this technique, this approach. Okay, thank you.